Welcome and thank you for joining the webinar today. My name is Amanda Jadro. I'm a Portfolio Analyst with Tricom Funding. Tricom is pleased to introduce our Industry Insider webinar series. The purpose of this series is to share expert knowledge and resources with our fellow staffing industry colleagues. Our presenters today are Mike Scoville and Meg Balistrieri. Mike is Aviante's Vice President of Sales for the Midwest and Northeast. After spending several years in a business development role at Epicor, Mike joined the Aviante sales team in early 2010. His background in selling ERP solutions made his transition to Aviante easy, and he quickly proved his ability to communicate the benefits of Aviante's staffing software in a way that is easy to understand. His trusting demeanor makes him a natural at developing strong customer relationships, and his energy and easygoing attitude have made him a valuable member of the Aviante team. Meg Balistrieri, Meg Balistrieri is an integral member of the Tricom funding team with a combined seven years of service. Over the years, Meg has increased her knowledge and experience by working in every department within Tricom. This versatility and depth of knowledge allows Meg to provide exceptional customer service to Tricom clients. Meg has a BBA in Accounting from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and a CPA degree from the state of Wisconsin. Aviante Staffing Software offers industry a complete front and back office software solution, servicing clients across the U.S. and Canada. Aviante provides innovative technology solutions that are designed to provide staffing companies and recruiters a way to improve business processes and profits through extensive functionality and a unique user experience. In today's Industry Insider webinar, Mike and Meg will discuss the benefits of search and retrieval while providing a sneak peek of the Aviante software functionality and features, including task lists, calendar of appointments, parse resume, generate resume, mass mail marketing blast, broadcast announcements, counters notification tool, unemployment tracking, and portals. By the end of this session, you'll see how applicant tracking software and Tricom's partnership with Aviante can benefit your staffing firm. If you have any questions during the presentation, please utilize the Q&A feature located on the right toolbar. After the presentation, there will be time for questions and an opportunity for you to give us your feedback on today's webinar. I will now turn the floor over to Meg. Good afternoon. Um, I wanted to thank you all again for joining us. I'm the project manager for the Aviante system here at Tricom. A little bit of background on the project. One of the problems we had identified with our client base is that they either didn't have a formal search and retrieval system in place or that the software that they did have in place was not robust enough for the needs of their business. We realized our clients needed systems that would allow their staff to fill orders faster with more accuracy and that our client owners needed flexible reporting that would allow them to keep their fingers on the pulse of the business. Our goal was to partner with a software system that Tricom could provide as an extension of our services. We found that the technology Aviante was offering was above and beyond what we were seeing in other front-end systems. In addition to the advanced reporting and search capabilities, the similarity to Microsoft Office makes it an easy system to learn and navigate. Tricom manages the software in-house, and we handle the implementations, training, and support, which allows our clients to limit the number of outside relationships they need to maintain. So if you're having a problem with your front office system, you just call Tricom directly. This summer, we converted our internal sales staff onto the software. In our own internal conversion, we found the software to be highly customizable and very intuitive for our sales staff to navigate through and learn. In preparation for this presentation, Mike Scoville and I really struggled with what features to highlight. So I just wanted to emphasize that this is really a high-level overview, and I would be happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with any of you so that we can dig into your specific business needs. Um, I just at this point wanted to turn it over to Mike so he can start digging into the system and letting you take a look. Okay, thanks Meg and thanks Amanda. And Meg, can I ask you quick if you can see my screen okay? I can see it just fine. Thanks, Mike. Okay, great. <clears throat> great. Well, thanks again, everyone, for taking time today and, 
and for Tricom for, for lining this up. We're really excited about this partnership that has been in the works um, you know, for some time and, and for a number of Tricom uh, clients to be able to utilize the Aviante product. Um, a great company to work with, and, and again, it's a, it's a good strategic partnership for us. So I'm excited to show you the application today, and, and as Amanda had said, going over, you know, from a, a high level, but a lot of detail here. Um, it's a very robust package. We're by no means getting into uh, too much, but I think that this will give you a really good overview of what our product can do and, and how it can uh, really help your business streamline some processes with onboarding. Um, the user-friendly experience is a really nice in terms of, uh, as Meg had said, bringing you know, converting from another system or as you're adding staff in the future, uh, being able to utilize the program. So with that said, let's dive into the system. And, um, you know, I, I believe there'll be time for, for questions towards the end here. So as you can see with Aviante, we really have that Microsoft look and feel because whether you love them or hate them, uh, people are familiar with it. So on the left-hand side, you can see our main menu. And the main menu would entail that the front office functionality of managing employees and customers and job orders. Um, we've got a nice resume parsing tool that we'll dive into, as well as mass mailing and favorites groups. Um, nice ways to be able to track and reach out to um, mass contacts or employees that you have in the database. We have a, a full suite of reporting as well as managing unemployment that we'll touch base on and, and do have work comp claim as well. As I kind of continue down counterclockwise, you can see we're at the main menu level. We do have nice calendar sharing. For those of you that are familiar with Outlook or using Outlook today, uh, very similar functionality. You can see I am Sales Demo 4, and this is my calendar, and I also want to see my friend here, Sales Demo 5's calendar. Very easy to add uh, new appointments. If I just double-click, it brings up my new appointment wizard. And I'll show you this on the employee and customer side of things as well. But you can attach this message to any number of uh, users or customers or contacts or employees that you have in the system. So that if I have an appointment with a customer and I want to attach it to, this, uh, to a, another customer record, I can go ahead and do that right here. So that if I'm meeting with the you know, Chicago department within Microdynamics, it's always going to be attached there. So anytime I look at that customer in the future, I can see this message or this activity. Again, I'll show you that from the employee side as well, but um, very easy to be able to track and not only that, be able to look back and, and really see what types of activities you've had. Continuing down here, um, we have our task section. And as Meg was saying how the internal staff at Tricom is, is utilizing Aviante, uh, we here at Aviante, this is my CRM package and uh, the tool that I use every day to uh, manage follow-ups with prospects. It's where we're looking at all of our active clients uh, that we have. So this is a, a tool that I really use to come in each day and see what are the tasks that I have. And under our current views or this category, you can see the tasks that are due until today or if I want to look at only today's tasks or what future tasks do I have coming out. As you can see when it's highlighted here, I, I need to follow up with Mike and everything down below here is letting me know some detail. So I need to follow up with Mike because I had stopped by and they may have needs for you know, 35 temps in the second quarter. Just to the right here, we're seeing who the customer is and any other users that are associated with this message. 
So as I highlight my task, that information below will reflect that. So here I had met with Barney Brainerd, and he's inter interested in some you know, light industrial positions in this case and has his drug test and background check. So I want to go ahead and follow up with Barney. To dive into any additional detail, um, I can also just dive right into that employee record by double clicking and it's going to blink, bring up that uh, employee screen. And, and I want to point this out as it populates because I think that this is a really important tool and something that can really help with the checks and balances of your operation. This message section that just came up is called a data requirement message. Imagine any process that you have internally today that your staff may be um, going back and checking on. And what I mean by that is if, if you're assigning an employee, but you need to make sure that they have a valid I-9, that they are drug tested, that they've had a background check, that they've signed your employee handbook, anything that you want to make sure um, so that you're only assigning and putting people out to work that are qualified, you can have that set as a data requirement message. In this case, this is just letting me know that this employee is a DNA, meaning do not assign, for microdynamics with all departments. So a nice alert so that if I'm working in order within microdynamics and I try to uh, place, in this case, Barney Brainerd, I can't. Those messages can either be soft warnings or they can be hard, uh, severe warnings, excuse me. So uh, you can dictate that. Either I can continue on or this is a hard stop. So here is the uh, employee record and a few things that I want to note before we go back to that start page. From a navigation standpoint, once you know how to navigate an employee record, you'll know how to navigate a customer and a job order because everything is very uniform and the same. Down below, uh, I know that I'm at the employee record because it's highlighted here, and my submenu has all of the detail that we can go into within that employee screen. Meg had touched base a little bit in the introduction on the customized and, and configurable uh, interface with Aviante. I often, when I'm on these demos, almost every time, people want to see different things when they're looking at an employee screen. You may be saying it to yourself right now. And in this case, with Barney Brainerd, down below, I'm seeing all messages that we have with Barney. And anytime there's a grid view like this, it's very um, workable, meaning I can sort by date or by action type just by clicking on that. So I can see those previous messages, but maybe you'd rather see where Barney has been on an assignment. And if I just right click, I'm dictating, I want to see that assignment screen. So what I want to see and what Meg or Amanda wants to see can be different. So each user has that flexibility and I think that's really important because although you as staffing companies uh, are very similar in a lot of regards, you're extremely different and that's what gives you your competitive advantage. So the software really needs to be able to work with you. So here I could see, you know, where has Barney been on an assignment? What was the job title, his pay and bill rate, start and end dates, and, and if there's a, any performance issues, I can see that here. On this right-hand side, we have the vertical panel. And just like that horizontal bar, if I right-click, I can dictate what I want to see. So here, this is going to be a lot of information, but dates, you know, what users we have associated, so who entered this employee, um, if there's a recruiter or someone that was interviewed, or who they were interviewed by, you can see that here. Um, same with this middle panel. Maybe I'd rather see any specific skills that Barney has, and they would be listed here or how he answered any interview questions. So each of your users can dictate what you see in that vertical and horizontal bar. I'm gonna go back to the start page 
to again kind of continue with that look and feel of the system. And the an area that I want to point out next is our counter section. And this is a really nice, uh, you know, what I would call heartbeat of what's going on within the organization today. A, a, a single spot that you can really get to a lot of information. Uh, you can see within the counters, I have one set up for online applicants. So anyone that came in, in through the online application today or overnight, what open orders do we have as a company? Kind of continuing down here, some others that I'd like to point out would be expiring employee certifications and documents. A really nice way to now take a proactive approach. So those expiring I-9s or driver's license or any document or certification that you have, it's set up for um, either, you know, it could be seven days or it could be one month in advance so that now I can see a list of these five employees have an expiring certification that I want to call them before I put them on an assignment and uh, again have to react. I can be much more proactive. So a really nice way to be able to dive into this information. This is dynamic here so if I wanted to look at my branch open orders I can go ahead and click on that and here are a list of those orders. So it jumps you right to that information. It's not just a list. Um, it brings you to that, and now I can work from here to know, here are all the uh, open orders that I need to uh, manage. With that said, in, in this screen view, I want to point out again how workable these grids are. Because we're looking by customer, I can always filter by customer. So if I only wanted to see Ceridian's orders, I can filter that. Any of these columns are sortable. Another example would be to group by. So I've got my order status here. And if I wanted to see what orders, new orders do we have, you know, we have two new orders. I've got 25 open orders, meaning I don't have anyone filled there. I've got 18 partially filled orders that I need to work. So it's very workable information. And I think that's important to find and drill down to that information that you want to see. The next area that I wanted to point out was the uh, ability to parse resumes. And there's a number of ways to bring employees or applicants into the system. We, we briefly touched base on that online application with that online applicant counter. From the employee screen, we have the uh, employee wizard, and that would be more of a manual enter entry. But we also have this parsing tool. And the resume parser is a really nice, quick way to be able to bring in information. So if I go to parse resume, here are the resumes that I have on my desktop that I may want to bring in. And in this case, let's use Lisa Linus. Now, our resume parsing tool is going to go in and see, do we already have Lisa Linus in the system today? And in this case, we do. Lisa Linus is employee 20461. We have, I have parsed her in the past. So I have a couple of different options. I can create Lisa as a new employee. I, or I could update her employee record. So maybe Lisa's sending me her resume saying, hey Mike, you know, I haven't worked for Aviante in the last year, but here's my updated resume that I want to put her new contact information, past job experience, education, skills, and update that employee record. To show you what creating a new employee looks like, I'm going to do that. And what I really like about the parsing tool is it actually shows me uh, the resume here so I can compare information. You know, I've got her personal data here. I do think it's important to point out as well as I can make edits here. So as I'm looking at the resume, if for whatever reason the name isn't coming in, um, I can make those, those edits here. And then down below we've got the contact method, her home phone and, and email. 
If we want to add any emergency contact information, I have an employee extra section as well. Her past job experience, you know, looks like in this case, Lisa's got a lot of accounting experience as an assistant and controller. Her education, she's got her certificate in accounting over at Dakota County Technical College. And then the parsing tool also brings in skills. And these skills are based on keywords that you're tracking in the database. So each of your companies out there um, may staff different industries or track different skills. Every dropdown that we have in the system is configurable by you. So you're going to see a lot of information here today. But that doesn't mean if you were to use Aviante, this would only be that information that is pertinent to your operation. So again, it's pulling those keywords and matching them with skills that we're tracking in the database. So again, this parsing tool is a really nice way to be able to bring in that information. Um, you can also mass parse if I wanted to um, you know, bring in uh, a group of resumes, we can do that as well. And again, the tool will go in and look to see, do we already have them in the system? So here are duplicates that we may have. Kind of continuing uh, back to that employee record, I had shown you Barney Brainerd, and uh, we have our, our searching tool up on top. Um, and this is a general search. I will show you the advanced search capability as well, but here we're looking at uh, searching by name. You could also search by social security number, the last four of the social um, phone numbers. So for those cases that you, uh, you, know, you have a phone number on a sticky note on your desk and, and you know, your colleague had left it and only half of it is legible, you can enter that phone number or what the phone number contains. So a lot of different areas that you can find those employees. And I'm just going to do a basic name search and pull up an employee that we have here, Manny Montana. Again, those data requirement messages, as I'm pulling up Manny, it's letting me know this employee has a work comp claim and he is shared between multiple branches. So these are just examples. I don't want you to think that you have to have these data requirement messages for any of these processes, but they are a really nice way uh, like I said, checks and balances, or we call them the, you know, the peacekeepers to make sure that that information is there um, and complete. So with Manny Montana here, again, down below I can see where he's been on an assignment. Uh, on the right-hand side of my vertical panel, I can see a nice summary of information on what skills Manny has and um, who the users are associated with Manny's record. Another tool that I wanted to point out was the ability to generate a resume. So some of you may be working in industries that applicants that come in, they're either applying online or sending you their resume that you want to parse into the system from email. Um, and some of you may work in industries that your customers would like to see a nice uh, document or resume regarding with the employees that you're sending. but these employees don't have a resume uh, readily available. So under our actions here, you're going to be able to see uh, our generate resume. And what that is doing is it's gathering all of the information that we're tracking in the database from education, skills, um, you know, any certifications that, uh, that Manny has, and putting it into a format. And these formats can be um, with your company logo. So these are just going to be kind of some vanilla examples of what we have. And I can save this as a PDF or as a document that's attached right to Manny's record here. To just show you what it looks like from a preview screen, again, this is going to be a pretty vanilla example, but here I could send this to a, uh, you know, one of my customers or if I'm going to send Manny out on an order, what his skills are. He's fluent in Spanish. He's machinist, has mechanical, forklift, assembly experience, any specific certifications that Manny has. So it's a really nice way to have a, 
a resume in, in your template with your branding that you can send out, uh, especially for those that don't have a resume uh, available. The next area that I would like to show you is our searching capability. And if I go back to the start page, you can see we have our shortcuts. And these shortcuts are also there within the employee and customer record. They are the four um, most popular action items for each user. So as you can see, we've got administrative tools and advanced searching or my branch settings. I've got a lot of different options here. These shortcuts are those areas that I use most often so I can quickly access that information. And again, if I just right click, maybe I'd rather see um, you know, form settings that we have. And the forms would be um, the order that I'm seeing these main menu options. So I can just right click and dictate what I want to see. And I, I, I can't say this enough that that's based on each individual user as well. So uh, there's nice flexibility there. The other thing that I want to point out with that is it's permission based on what you can do in the system on individual and groups of users. But getting back to that advanced search functionality, this is one of the few areas in the system that it's going to pull up a new window. We really try to work within the same screen and even operate within tabs for the most part. Um, this is one area that we bring up a new, a new window. And you can see under search type, I can look at employees, customers, any information that we have in the system, you're able to search on. So if I wanted to look for um, you know, a, a group of employees or a certain employee, I could do a radius search based on their address and zip code. I could search based on a specific certification. Uh, do have free text search within resumes. So if I wanted to search a document, and my document type would be a resume, and I wanted to search the free text within this document, so anyone that has, say, Java, I can do that within this search. And you can make this as dynamic as you'd like. Uh, we could search how someone has answered a specific interview question or based on their past job experience or requirements. So maybe um, you know, those that have had their background check completed. Again, you're really only limited to what you have. Um, it's very easy to be able to drill into that information. You can also save these searches. And from my uh, drop down here, we can see a, a number of saved searches that I have today from you know, available employees to data entry positions or forklift drivers. So I can see, you know, if I look for those, those forklift drivers in Minnesota and I want to run that search, you can see the, the search criteria down below has changed for me. And here are those individuals that I have. And because there was a, uh, a radius search involved, I can also sort by distance. So Stephen St. Paul is in that zip code and Leo Little is 8.74 miles away from there. Now, from search results, it's important to point out some action items that you have. So if I'm working a current job order for a forklift position, uh, I could add these two as candidates to that current order and assign them. If I'm running a search for um, based on skills and maybe I want to create a favorite group for these are my favorite data entry um, employees in the Milwaukee market. So that any time I get a data entry position, I want to send a mass mail to that favorite group with that. We also have Call em All. And in integration with Call em All, for those of you that aren't familiar with Call em All, uh, Call em All is an automated voice service. So within Aviante, you have the ability to send text messages and emails. What Call em All brings to the table is the ability to send a automated voice message or survey to groups. Uh, it could be individual employees or, or large groups of employees. 
So you have your different broadcast types of, again, it could be an announcement, a survey, so I could send something out. You know, I'd like to wish everyone happy holidays on behalf of Aviante. Please press 1 if you are interested in employment in the near future. Press 2 if you have found permanent employment elsewhere. Um, but a really nice way to reach the masses. So I'd encourage you to take a look at Kalamal's website. Um, it's a great service or a good partner of ours, but a nice way, again, to be able to reach out to individuals. And, and there's a lot of flexibility here, so I could send this now, or if I wanted this message to go on a later date, we can dictate that here. But a nice way to do that without having to leave Aviante. Back to these action items. Um, Again, I could also send an email or text message to these individuals. So whether I had two people here or 200, uh, the ability to reach out to people very quickly, let them know, hey, I have a great opportunity you know, for uh, X amount of dollars per hour. Let us know as soon as you can. If you're interested in the position, it starts Monday. Now, this is kind of leading me over to the mass mailing functionality. You just saw within the advanced searching results uh, the functionality to reach out to all of those, whether it was, again, in a text message or an email. Mass mail is a really nice way to be able to format templates to reach these people. So if I want to create a new mass mail, uh, this is that setup wizard. So if I have a description, and I'm just going to put in a, a test description, you can have multiple email profiles. And I'll and I interrupt myself real quickly. When it comes to email functionality, that's something that I would direct towards Meg and her team, and, and we'll work with you to discuss um, your different options there. But I've got a, a couple of different email profiles that I'm setting up, and, and what type of mass mail is this? Meaning, who do I want to reach out to? Is it a, a group of contacts at my customer or prospect locations, or is it a group of employees? And then if I have favorite groups set up, I can go ahead and select that. So maybe I've got a favorite group here, my data entry candidates. And I've got a hot data entry position right now that I want to reach out to all of these individuals. As I click next here, I can create a new template, or if I have templates set up, I can select, you know, here's my data entry job offer. And it's going to let's say, hi, we haven't heard from you since that last recipient contact date. So it's going to look in the database and be able to format this email based on certain information. What type of job is it? What's the pay rate for this job? Call me as soon as you can because it's going to go fast. Thanks, and I hope you have a great day. So I'm going to associate this order or this, um, this mail with a particular order. And the reason for that is, again, it's going to pull in that specific information. So if I've got a data entry position here within um, oh, Ceridian as an example, now I'm going to be able to see that particular information pulling up, and I can preview that. So these are going to go out individual to everyone, and again, as they respond back, um, we can take our next action of either adding them as a candidate or, if they're not interested, moving on to the next. So again, that mass mail is a really nice way to be able to reach out. Um, if you've seen me use the, the percent sign, that's a wild card search in our system. Um, but here, if I want to look at previous mass mailers that I've sent out, it looks like I had a, a new job or a data entry offer again or a monthly um, marketing letter that I'm sending out to prospective can, uh, contacts. The next area that I want to touch base on is our unemployment tracking. And this is a really nice tool to have within your, um, you know, your, your software solution. If I want to create a new unemployment claim, I have my new unemployment wizard here. 
just like in my new mass mail or if I wanted to add a new employee. And I can go ahead and bring up an individual and I'll pick on Manny Montana again. So I just put in MON, I can see Manny Montana. And here is where we would enter, you know, those claim numbers. What's the determination status? Um, what's the reason status? Is it an employee appeal, a disallowed claim, a company appeal? So a great way to be able to track all of this information in the system. I'm going to take a look at a current claim that we have. So let me cancel out of this and just pull up all of the unemployment claims currently out there. And here we have Annie Anoka and John Mackinac and Sandy Shakopee. So let's pull up John Mackinac's record. So here we can see what his last pay rate was, his total hours worked, and average earnings. In that submenu again, this is all of the detail that we can go into within these claims. So if you want to attach documents, um, you want to log messages, you know, if we've offered John a position um, and he's declined, we can see that. So it looks like he had a job refusal for job nine or 3453. Three. He said it was too far away. The other area that I really like within this unemployment and the benefit, again, of having this in your software system is that there's a lot of additional functionality, including auto match. So with John Mackinac in this case, I can run an auto match with all temporary orders that we have in the system. And here I see a result of 21 orders that we have that I can go down the list and, and say, hey, John, we've got some great opportunities to get him back out to work. If he were to refuse, I can always log that um, and have that documented. All right, and I'd like to dive into the portals now, and we have a number of different portals with Aviante. The two that I wanna focus on are the employee portal and the customer portal. I briefly talked about the online application as well. Um, but this employee portal for your current employees today, uh, a place that they can log in, and it's a really nice self-service tool. But in this case, I am Danny Delaware, and Danny can go ahead and see his personal information. I do want to stress that this is permission-based on what they see and have access to. You're seeing a lot but that can be simplified down. And the reason I say that is I don't want to scare anyone to think, well, I don't want employees to have access to too much. Uh, the other area that I want to point out is that there are logs built throughout the system. So I can run an employee log and see any changes that were made to their record. What was the previous value? What's the current value? Who changed it? And what time was it changed? So if there's ever a scenario that you think a job order has changed, you can run your job order log and see, okay, here's exactly who did what, when, and what the uh, past and current value is. Same thing with this portal. But again, Danny can see you know, his employee information, if he has particular skills that he wants to update or new document uh, that he'd like to attach to his portal, he can do that. This is directly tied to the core application. Danny could also see where he's on assignment and get more detail here. So he's at, on a data entry position within uh, MN Plastics in this case. If we click on this information, we're going to be able to dive into uh, additional information regarding this specific assignment, any specific directions. So, you know, if he needs to sign the book um, to the door on the black desk, and ask for will, will for instructions. If there's specific shifts or days of the week that he's working, he'd be able to see that here as well. eDocuments is a way to um, have employees sign electronically and have this stored under their record. So the I-9, W-4, any policy and procedure manual or safety manual that you may have employees signing off on, now you have that ability to do that electronically. Really speaking of going paperless, um, 
and, and nice functionality to, to have that documented. I'll give you just an example here of this employee acknowledgement. If I go ahead and view that, um, it's going to pull this up and uh, you have a couple of different options when it comes to electronic documents. Uh, number one, there can be the checkbox that I agree and they can type their name. Uh, another way would be to have it uh, be done on a, a signature pad in your branch location or at a customer location. So that's something that you would have to decide on what makes sense for you, but you have that flexibility and again, a nice way to have this done electronically and, and moving away from the file cabinets and, and those paper copies. The electronic documents often bring up a lot of questions. Uh, again, I do want to say, you know, I'm more than happy to be a resource and, and I know Meg is as well um, after this demo and we can answer additional questions with regards to those. Here's an example of that I-9 again that those employees can sign off on. So in this case we had a signature pad, um, but again if there's a checkbox for certain documents that you want to use you can do that. And finally, um, within the employee record they have the ability to enter time. So Danny here is on a number of assignments for us. Um, most likely that would be uh, a smaller number, but Danny can come in and enter his time of well, when did he start, break in, break out, and end time, and submit this time to your customer contact for approval. So a nice way to streamline that time entry process if you're doing a lot of uh, paper time cards today, uh, to use this employee portal and have them enter their time. Again, have your customers verify that time and the way that they would do that would be through their customer portal. So now customers can go ahead and log in. Again, I want to stress permission based on what they see here, but they could see you know, what orders do they have and what's the status of those orders today. I really like that ability to verify time again. So they can see what pending time cards do they have. What are those that were not, have not been submitted at this point? And when that is approved, that is all pulled right into time entry. Um, and again, that's something that um, those processes I'd work with Tricom and, and, uh, and Meg with. With that said, uh, coming up on 145 here Central, um, I did want to leave some time for questions. I know it's a lot of information. I use the analogy, it's kind of like drinking from a fire hose. Uh, but, you know, I'm always a resource. I know Meg and, and Amanda and their team um, are available as well. But if I can pass this back to Meg and Amanda and kind of go from there. All right, um, we're just going to wait a second and, and see what questions we have coming in. Looks like, looks like we have a few, so we'll get on that in a second. Okay, so one of the first questions we have are, are employee skills automatically added from the candidate resume, or is this done through recruiter data entry? Good question. So when you parse the resume, those skills are automatically brought into that employee record or those that are matched. So if you remember with Lisa Linus as the example and we're parsing, those skills are attached to um, that employee record under the skill section. So if I bring up Lisa Linus and in that sub menu again, this is all the detail that we can go into with that employee. Here are those skills that are mapped over from, from the resume. With the online application, they're also entering those skills and that's pulled right into this section so it eliminates data entry at that level. media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. 
Yeah, good question. We from from job order um, in terms of being able to post out. Um, Aviante right now has an integration with Career Builder, and with those social media platforms, it's an RSS feed. So if you were sending out to Indeed or Facebook or Twitter. Um, that's an RSS feed, and from those orders, we can post to the web. And I don't want to go too quickly, but I think it, it is nice to be able to see where that is. So if I'm at the order level here, and I want to post this order out to the web, I can do that from my action screen, populate any information that I need to, um, need to hear or any job descriptions that I want to send out, and that can populate, um, again, whether it was my company or Facebook site or, or Twitter site, um, Career Builder if you are, or Indeed. Those are all options that you have. So we're always working more on that social media front um, because that is uh, you know, where everything is going, both on mobile functionality and, and the social media side of things. Okay, and also does Connexa Prove It test results integrate into the employee file automatically? Right now, it does not. Um, Meg was at our client connection form here last week. Prove It integration is a top priority that is being developed, and I, I can't give a specific date. It is coming close. Um, I will say out of... For our customer base, uh, you know, out of a show of hands of about 215 attendees last week, uh, I would say it's well into that 80 or 90 percent of our customers use it. So that when I say a top priority, I would mean, um, you know, we're, we're months away from having that fully integrated. Okay. And how easy is it to create customer reports? Was that custom reports or customer reports? Customer report, reports. Um, well, from a reporting and, and kind of speaking to the function or the um, the platform that Aviante is built on, we are um, we're a SQL-based system written in .NET, uh, very flexible. Custom reporting, we use SQL Server reporting services. Um, you know, if you have the information in the system very easy to retrieve it. So uh, kind of a, 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 I don't want to be too vague with you. It's a, it's a tricky question to just give a, a real specific answer. If you're tracking the information in the system, we can report on it. Um, chances are we already have the report, but if it's something that uh, in particular, uh, we can take a look at it and see if we've done it in the past or um, something that we can, uh, we can build. And, you know, I could speak from our experience um, with the TRICOM conversion that we did. There are several reports that um, we were able to make minimal modifications to to make them line up with the reporting that we had in our old system. Um, often those changes can be done very quickly, sometimes even in the course of the day. So um, if it's something that you're looking into converting, part of the um, process would involve us looking at the reporting that you're currently using, comparing it to the reporting that the system has, and bringing those two pieces closer together. Okay, and I'll go on to the next question. Can the user view more than one screen at a time? I have two, can have, I have two orders open at the same time. Yeah, so I was just taking a look at that question and, and directing to where I was going right now. So if I'm working with a number of different orders as an example, you do only have the one screen. But with that said, I've got my drop down here for the different orders that I've been working on. So if I wanted to go back to that Cook Technology order here for a forklift driver, I can see that within my drop down and navigate back and forth. So no, you are not bringing up more than one screen. And, and again, the, the reason behind that is, I think we've all had those scenarios where you bring up multiple windows and all of a sudden you start to get lost in the shuffle of which window is where and does what. Um, this is really meant to be very clean and 
as I want to look at multiple orders, I can go to my drop down and see previous orders that I've been working on. Um, you know, and as I kind of dig into more orders, that drop down just gets a little longer. In regards to calendar appointments, can you attach it to an appointment or job order also, or does it have to be associated with an employee or a customer contact? Good question. You can attach that to um, a job order, whether it's a temporary order, direct hire order. You can attach that to a specific assignment. An assignment would be under an order level. I could attach that to a customer. So maybe if I'm meeting specifically with Microdynamics, uh, again, it's going to list multiple departments for me, and I can attach that to that specific customer. So um, a lot of flexibility there in who you want to attach that to, and any time that I go back to Microdynamics or another employee, you know, if I attach an employee to this, I would see that message. Electronic document feature populate the information into Aviante. Does the, um, the payroll information populate into their payroll file automatically, or would we have to have a user rekey the information? So, in terms of the electronic document feature populating the information into Aviante, where that is housed is under that employee record, in this case, um, I'm going to go back and grab my Manny Montana, or actually Danny Delaware in this case. And under Danny's document section here, here you can see any, uh, anything that we've attached, like a letter or resume to Danny's profile. Uh, but then we also have the e-document tab. Now this is at I9W4, so that's automatically attached. And I want to be careful or sure on how I answer this. When you say, um, because I'm often asked, will it automatically populate some of Danny's personal information into the e-document? And it will. And that's part of uh, some mapping that we do so that Danny's name and address and uh, any personal information that he has, depending on what you're capturing in that document, populates. Um, as an example, you know, I'm sure it's never happened, but an employee spells their name wrong. To have that automatically populate from that, uh, you know, their employee information. Now, in terms of some of that payroll information populating, so like direct deposit information, you know, you would have the direct, uh, you would have that here within that employee record, but that's something you would want to verify and then, you know, put into the um, payroll information. So, I, I'm, it's a little vague on the answer, and, and I mean it on purpose, Michelle, because I'd have Meg and Amanda kind of answer a little more information on what you want to see with regards to payroll information populating. And, you know, I think in part it, it's really going to depend on um, whether what you do for your back office processing. You, you know, if you do your back office processing with us, it may be handled differently than if you do your back office processing internally. Um, so it would be something that on uh, a case-by-case -case basis we would work together to find the right solution for each client. Um, there are the capabilities to do it, but depending on your internal processes and um, how you handle that, it may be the answer may be slightly different depending on who we're talking to. So, okay. So I'll go on to the next question. Um, I process payroll and would like to know if there is a report to keep track of employees' hours. I think I'll field that one. Um, yeah, go ahead. I, yeah, that kind of falls into the same ballpark. Um, if you are a full service client, then your back office reporting would be the same back office reporting that you're accustomed to um, coming from Tricom. The, what we're offering right here is really just the, the front office piece of it. So where you're obtaining your back office reporting would still be 
where you would obtain the back office reporting after your conversion. Okay, if anyone else has any other questions, please continue to um, put them in either the Q&A section or the chat feature. Um, I do have a couple other questions that I'll read off. Can we customize the drop down? Yes, good question. Um, it, it's extremely configurable, and, and um, like I said, every dropdown in the system is customizable by you. And what I mean by that, let's look at the details section, and um, as an example, we really use these statuses. So the statuses that we have in our demo database for an employee would be active, applicant, deleted. All of these statuses are based on what you want them to be. Um, so. Every, every drop-down in the system is configurable and customizable by you because you're going to be tracking different things that, um, you know, Tricom is going to be tracking and so on. Okay. Not all candidates will use the same word to describe a skill. One resume may, see, may say AP and another may say accounts payable. How does the system handle this? Good question. So with, within resumes um, and that advanced searching, you do have free text searching. Uh, but if we go back to um, the parsing capability, and I'll be able to show this really quick here, but if I go ahead and want to um, you know, parse a resume into the system, and I'm going to just grab one as an example, Lisa Linus here. If you remember under that skill section, we've got a lot of keywords here. So, you know, accounts payable, um, accounts receivable, accounting software. We're mapping these. So, if you're tracking that skill as accounts payable, receivable, anytime it sees these keywords, it's going to bring it in that way. So, this is one way to streamline that into what you want, uh, how you want that classified. And then again, you do have that free text search for resumes. Those would be probably the, the um, two best ways that I would say in retrieving that information. Well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. If you do have any individual questions and um, would like more information about anything that you've seen today, please feel free to contact Meg directly and I'll put her contact information up on the screen. Um, I'm also going to open up a poll if you could provide us your information, um, just some feedback on today's webinar. Um, with that, I'd like to thank uh, our presenters today and all of you for joining us, and, and um, definitely Mike and Meg for sharing their knowledge about Aviante's applicant tracking software. Um, again, if you have any questions, please do reach out to Meg directly. Um, thank you again for your participation and watch for information on our next webinar session in September on the 26th regarding tax credits. Thank you.